would it be valuable to you if you could have your hero or heroine sitting right in front of you right now, giving you personalized advice on your life? What value would you find in that? Well, I think it would be incredibly valuable. But is that possible? What if my hero or heroine is from the past? What if it's a modern day hero that I don't have accessibility to? What if it's someone in the future? What if it's somebody real? What if it's somebody fictitious? Is that possible to get personalized advice from our heroes or heroines? Well, if you want to know, you need to stay tuned. wondered what it would be like to have one of my heroines sitting across from me allowing me to dig into the whys and the what's of the, her life and honestly give me some perspective on my life from their eyes even though our day and age may be similar or dissimilar there's so much that we can learn from those that we admire we have studied their character traits They're, we are drawn to them for a certain reason who would I pick? Well, the group that I would pick. I have my little hero circle of advisors, so to speak, that if I had a chance to do a round table, I would call those in. One of them, Joan of Arc. I became intrigued with her life mission when I read her biography by the famous Mark Twain. He wrote about her after years and years of research, including information he found from journals from people that actually knew her from the 1400s. Remarkable. If you haven't read that version of Joan of Arc, it's a must read. Mark Twain said of Joan of Arc, whatever thing men call great, look for it in Joan of Arc, and there you will find it. it took 6,000 years to produce her. Her life will not be seen in, on this earth again for another 50,000. She is easily and by far the most extraordinary person the human race has ever seen, Mark Twain. Joan achieved her greatness and she fulfilled her life's purpose when she was a teenager. Now I have a curriculum that's based for teenagers. Let me tell you, that's someone they should study. She was instrumental in overturning one of the greatest conflicts of the Middle Ages, the Hundred Year War, and was the catalyst for saving France from English occupation. Why do you imagine right now, listeners, that your country is at war? The fighting was not in some far off place. Sometimes we hear, oh, there's fighting here. No, it was right there where you were, right where you lived. And soldiers would come through and they'd plunder at will. You're never fully used to the lack of peace. Survival ball became your new norm. It had been that way for three generations. And that was the way of life in France during the Hundred Year War. And that is the world that Joan of Arc lived in. I have questions for Joan of Arc. And specifically, I asked her questions in regards to the teens of today. So if you have teens or still have a teen inside of you, which we all do, I'd love you to listen to some of the information that Joan gave from her perspective. So how did you know what your mission was, was my question. Her response, I was a simple peasant girl, unlearned in many things, but skilled in the ways of homemaking. Our era was a spiritual one, and my mother taught me the power of prayer, and I prayed with a great faith in God. I really wasn't looking for visitations from angels, but that's what happened when I was 13 years old. Our culture spoke openly of angels, yet it wasn't until my third visitation that I felt that these voices were truly a reality and just not part of my imagination. Who was I to help Dauphin Charles VII to be crowned the King of France? Through years of angelic communication, I knew what my mission was. Though I was young and inexperienced, I was empowered to do my work. And then ask her, what gave you the courage to convince adults and magistrates that you were serious about driving England out of France. I didn't know not to have courage. I was told by angels what to do and to accomplish this mission, I would need persistence, 
it was not until I went to meet Charles VII for the first time that I gained his respect. I had never met him before and to test me, he was hidden in the crowd in commoner's clothes. I went straight up to him. And when I shared with him the information that only he knew, he was finally convinced that I was about righteousness and backed by the God of heavens. I then asked her, what was your biggest challenge during your quest to help save France? Because of the time I lived in, there was the opinion that women were not to lead, especially at the age 17 or 18. So much persistence was needed to create any movement. My country was tired from war and ready to give up. It takes one with energy and youth to awaken others to the possibility when they know that God is on their side. Even my father and brother thought I was mad in the beginning, but then they rallied around me in the end. I asked, what did you learn about courage? My courage came out of the intense focus for an end goal and conviction that the direction I was going in was right. I could not understand at times why men and magistrates lacked the confidence when it was about protecting our homeland. It was not my physical strength that gave us victories, but it was my strong mental mindset that provided us hope, motivation, direction, creative alternatives when we were faced every day with each and every battle. I never killed another in battle, but I calmed the doubts of men many times my age. Youth has its advantages as I was not encumbered with doubt and failures that dissuade. I then asked her, how can teens of this generation develop your mental mindset? She said, the youth of your generation are equipped as I was with all they need to be a force for great influence. And victory comes when we realize that first, courage is about going forward with conviction on your chosen path. Courage is changing that path when you see better way. You need to try until you succeed. Effort is non-negotiable, consistent effort. For you view mistakes as opportunities, not failure. Mistakes bring learning and growth. Embrace the growth. Learn and move on. Fifth, ask for help and feedback from trusted resources. Even the other side is posed to help. Never let your age, gender, or race be an excuse for the greatness you can achieve. The only difference between me and others is that I believed I could. Let's just breathe that one in for a minute. I then asked, what advice do you have for the teens of now? And how can they create the greatest achievements in their life? Her response, my life was not cluttered with frivolous things. I was hardworking with many skills, yet I could not read or write. I did not make excuses for what I lacked, but I focused on my strengths. I did not doubt that I, a peasant girl, could follow through on my quest. When I encountered a problem, I would think of a solution. There always seemed to be another way. I would say to the teens of your day to look up and live present in this world of opportunity. Youth of any time could contribute in great ways by just stepping up and accepting the call to action. Everyone has a piece to play in your day of uncertainty. Quick wits, pure grit, and a willingness to listen to your angels can maneuver you through challenges and on to great opportunity. Find your vision. And with focus, complete your mission in life. Now, that was my interview with Joan of Arc. And Sam may say, whoa, wait, did you channel her? Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. But can I tell you the science behind this? Because some of you might be saying, wait, wait what? There is science behind bringing your hero or heroine in. And it's as simple as studying their lives, studying their character traits, studying their virtues, studying the things that they stood for, 
those things that they were non-negotiable for them. Study the setbacks and the failures, the resilience. When we know our hero and heroine story so well, if you were to bring a round table of your favorite people, and you know their virtues, and you know what they stand for. If you sit in meditation and just ponder upon it and say, you know what? I need some help. Here's a situation in my life. And I've selected you to be on my committee, my imaginary committee, my round table of my favorite heroes. And I selected you because of this trait and this trait and this trait and this trait and this trait. And I feel that you are qualified to help me come up with solutions, give me some advice, et cetera. Because I knew Joan of Arc's life so well, it's as if I could hear her words in my ear. That's the possibility that we have. Imagination is the most powerful nation on earth. Some will say, well, then you're just imagining this, right? Possibly. But what value did you get from that interview with Joan of Arc? It was powerful because I felt as if she were sitting there with me, giving me advice for the teenagers of today. That's the same thing that you can do. Joan of Arc was a teenager of action, resilience, fortitude, perseverance, hard work, focus, solid mindset, and courage. She made great positive changes unapologetically. She persisted with achieving her goals. She felled and she tried and she felled and she kept going again. That's what I love about her. She did not wait for a popular census from others before she went forward with conviction. Instead, she started to distance herself from those that did not align to her higher cause. It kind of reminds me of that visual of a crab pot. You can put a crab in a pot with a lid and he will struggle to get out. But then you can add many more crabs on top of that original crab. And even though they could crawl to the top and possibly reach the edge, the other crabs will pull the escaping crab down and not let it leave, keeping all the crabs at the same trapped level. Well, Joan of Arc had to escape the crabs in her life that might pull her down because she believed in her mission. I want you to make the parallel here with you right now. Do you have a mission? Do you have a purpose? Do you have a direction you want to go? And you are surrounded by crabs? Those that don't believe in your mission, don't believe that you can do, and instead want to keep you at status quo? Then you got to distance yourself from those crabs. you got to distance yourself from those that are the naysayers. Because those that make a difference are those that do things a little bit differently. I have a t-shirt that says, get used to different. Different doesn't always make it right. But when it's something that you, you feel in your heart is your mission, you feel in your heart is something you need, to, then you align yourself with the heroes from the past, from the modern day ones, those that you can study their life and say, what did they do to be successful? And invariably, if you have a Joan of Arc in your life, you're going to find that at times they felt very alienated. And at times they did things very differently from other people. What is the saying? If you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. And so if we want to make changes in our life, we have to do things different than what everybody else is doing. Otherwise, we're status quo. We go with the flow of life. But if you want to make a mark in your life, if we want to make a difference, then we have to see what is my individual journey and who are those mentors, both past and present, that I can go into meditation and ask for advice. Scientifically speaking, Joan of Arc was no longer vibrating at that same frequency with the people who had no vision, they had no hope and no desire. I mean, these people were so done with war. They were just being annihilated and they just wanted to roll over and die. And she was like, no, we're going to make a difference. Joan had a growth mindset and she used that to empower possibilities and to level up her life. And as I've contemplated the virtues that she embodied, I can't help but be struck by the name ARC, A-R-C, which was actually a derivative from her father's name. Did you know that? But I also saw that ARC was actually an acronym that so neatly tied up the purpose of, of our destinies. It symbolizes a starting point, 
and a finishing point. It's kind of an umbrella of principles. And when we have those principles to guide us, we can be a lot more successful in our life. To empower the possibilities in our life and to level up, we need to move from the anchors, those things that are holding us in the past. And we need to create what we desire our life to look like through the senses, through the things we see, hear, taste, touch, smell, and imagine. And then we create that new reality in the here and now so that we can live it. Now, I bring that up because honestly, the level up program that I have right now literally steps you into how to have those virtues, those virtues that we're talking about. And every day, 95% of our thoughts and our habits are the same as they were the day before and the day before. And we have to get up and find a way to do a better, different thing so that we can create differently and level up, we can help you create differently. So what life are you creating? Awaken your imagination, pull out your goals and passions and set a path towards your destiny. Allow yourself to think today, if I had the opportunity to have my mentor, my hero, my heroine right in front of me, who is it that I would pick? Who is it that I would bring forth to be able to give me the information that I need from my personalized life? Don't doubt it. This can happen. You can actually get, I'm going to say, personalized information that can catapult your life that you can come back to time and time again because you study the lives of those who espouse those virtues and have accomplished in their life those things that no one else accomplished. I hope this sparked a little bit of interest to tiptoe into bringing in your hero or your herald. This is powerful information and science. It's science. Gotta love it. Good luck this week. I hope you'll share with us any information you have on who your hero or heroine is. Would love to hear your stories. Tally ho, my friends.